Now, just when you think artificial intelligence can't get more intelligent, it does. AI creations used to be garbled and incomprehensible, but now it's hard to pick the fake images from the real ones. ABC reporter Ange Lavopierre has been covering this hugely forward in tech for background briefing. She joins us now from Sydney. And I'm absolutely fascinated. So what are some of the things these AI tools can do that might surprise people? Oh, I mean, if you've been on the internet in the last little while, you might have seen some rather uncanny looking images. Um, and a lot of them are, are AI generated. So what we're talking about is this class of AI that's fairly new. It's called generative AI. And the whole idea is that you can type in like a simple text prompt, just simple language, like, I don't know, maybe you want like a 7-Eleven staffed by witches or a, or a portrait of Miss Piggy uh, in the style of Brett Whiteley. You can type it in uh, and you'll get something back straight away that is actually pretty impressive. Now, that didn't used to be the case. Uh, I feel like, you know, generative AI is one of those things, I feel like for as long as I can remember, we've been promised, oh, you know, very impressive, incredible AI is just around the corner. It's coming, it's coming in. After a while, you kind of go, yeah, like, wake me when it arrives. Uh, but this is the year that it arrived. Uh, so that's why I wanted to, to cover the story. So where is this heading? Um, great question. <laughs> I think there are a few places it could head. I wanted to, in this episode of Background Briefing, talk about some of the incredible places, but also the sort of scary places as well. I think, you know, the obvious place that is a little bit scary is when you have the very uh, quick ability to, at your fingertips, anyone can create any image they want, pretty much any image. It becomes quite difficult to trust what you're seeing on the internet. And we're kind of on the precipice of that now. So once these tools become even more sophisticated and even more widely known, uh, it will potentially undermine trust even further than trust has already been undermined. On the other hand, you know, what you've got is beyond images, video is kind of the next step here. So, uh, you know, when you combine that with uh, tools like virtual reality or augmented reality, we're talking about a scenario where you could essentially inhabit a waking dream of your own making, which is pretty cool. Okay, uh, I don't want to frighten people un unnecessarily out there, Ange, but I'll ask the question that I want to ask. How worried should we be about this? <laughs> Tony's worried. He's shaking in his seat here. <laughs> well, look, that's the goal. I came on here to frighten you, so <laughs> mission accomplished. Uh, no, look, I think uh, about as worried as you already are uh, is is probably the answer. Like, what what this is about is it kind of uh, you. In some ways, we're already on these paths, but this speeds us towards them. And I think what's really important is that at this point in history, we're really demanding a lot of transparency from Silicon. Valley uh, on issues, uh, on uh, the development of these tools, because it does kind of get built behind closed doors. Uh, we hear about it when it arrives, and they're, those same engineers are right now busy building the next big things. So uh, much in the same way that we didn't expect everything that came out of Facebook, uh, this, is, this is one of those things where we're, we're at a bit of a hairpin turn in, uh, in history, and we need to kind of Keep an eye on these guys, I think. I'll be keeping an eye on it, all right. Angela Vopier, thank you so much. Background briefing, looking forward to it.